welcome back to my channel. My name is Holly. This is She Reads. Today we're going to be doing a book review on Nicholas Wolfe's The Binding. Now when I sat down to read this one I thought this is going to be a perfect review to do for Halloween because this book seemed really really creepy and I had really high hopes for it. It let me down. <laughs> I am really sorry to say that this one is maybe a 3 out of 5, if that, maybe even a 2.5 out of 5. I just, I was really disappointed. Let me read the back of it to you in case you don't remember it from my unboxing. But this one says, Tara has come to north of Massachusetts as a brutal slang on the local college campus shatters the tranquility of this once sleepy town. But for young psychiatrist Nat Thayer and his oldest friend, Detective John Bailey, there may be more connected to this shocking act of violence than anyone could have imagined. One of Northam's patriarchs has approached Nat with a desperate plea for help, convinced that something fearful has overtaken his beautiful daughter, Becca. Even though Becca is alive, she truly believes the opposite, that she was also murdered three weeks earlier, which Nat diagnoses as Cotard delusion, an obscure condition sometimes described as walking corpse syndrome. And as the mystery deepens, Nat and John soon understand that sinister forces may have been resurrected from Northam's disturbing history and that some malignant spirit secrets were meant to stay hidden forever. So when I read the back of this, I kind of assumed it was going to be maybe a possession story involving this girl, Becca, who thinks that she died. Um, and I guess it kind of was. I'm going to do this first part of the book spoiler free and the second part with spoilers, <laughs> if that makes sense. So I'm not going to give too many details away, but one thing that I found with this book was that I had a really hard time, even now I'm trying to figure out, like after I'm done and I'm like, okay, what was this about? Was it about zombies? What is it about possession? Was it about serial killers? Like there was just so much going on and you didn't really know what you were reading, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, which I mean can be a good thing to keep your readers guessing, but it just wasn't executed very well. And one of the biggest things that I found with this book was that I did not connect to any of the characters. I did not care whether they lived or died, what happened to them. It made for a very interesting reading experience because I've never, I really don't think I've ever felt like that with any book that I've read and actually finished. It just, I just didn't care. I mean, there was a young boy in here that you kind of cared what happened to him be, just because he's a child. <laughs> but other than that, I mean, there was nothing really linking you to any of these characters. And a lot of the characters I found I really disliked. Like at the beginning, when you meet Nat, who is the therapist that they talked about on the back here, like you kind of just like think of him as being immature and you kind of think like, my, I personally thought, gosh, I wouldn't want this guy to be my therapist. Like, he seems really immature and I don't really like him. Same thing with Detective John Bailey. I kind of didn't really like him in the beginning either. He just seemed really desperate and kind of just like, I don't know, like, it was almost a trope that he's just like this desperate, like, fat cop that just like, can't, nothing's going right for him in life. Like, it's just, it's just so overdone. Those kind of characters are just so overdone. And even the way that he interacted with his son, like there was parts of it that I'm like, really? Like, I just don't think that I would feel that way about my son. Like, I don't think that I would have that kind of thought about my kid. I don't know, it was just kind of strange. Another huge issue that I had with this book was the fact that they just continued to introduce new characters and in a way that you thought that they were gonna be sticking around for the entire book. So it was, the book was written in first person perspective and you kept getting new characters and you were along for the ride with them. But then all of a sudden their part would be cut short and you wouldn't really hear from them again. And so I didn't really understand what the reasoning was for that because there were other characters that were talked about and that you kind of gathered their story from other characters, like from Detective John Bailey and from Nat Thayer, you kind of gathered their stories from those characters. So I'm not sure why they chose to add in so many more characters and not just have them kind of discussed in that way so that you could still get their stories but not become like immersed in their story, if that makes sense. I'm not sure if, if I'm saying that properly, but it just I just felt it could be I just felt it could have been written differently 
so that it wasn't so confusing because you just kept like the first whole half of the book was just introducing you to new characters and you're not sure how these stories are going to link up and then all of a sudden like half these characters that you're introduced to aren't even in the second half of the book it was just weird and a lot of those characters i felt like after i finished the book i felt as though they were only introduced as a means to an end just so that you could kind of like look back on those characters and realize that they had played a role to the ending if that makes sense like they weren't really important to the story other than just to like tie up ends at the end and that is the other thing is that the ending of this book left a lot to be desired you are waiting like you're at an end of a chapter and the next chapter is going to be the chapter where all the action happens everything ties together and it just like it comes full circle you don't get that <laughs> so it was I was very let down the ends did tie together but I just felt like he kind of like copped his way out of this ending. Like it just, he could have written such a great ending for it. And I just felt like it was a big cop out. Like they're just, it was an easy way to end it. I'll just say that. So you guys, that is all that I'm going to say for my spoiler free section of this book. I mean, I don't want to say don't read this book. I did like it and there were things about it that I did like. It was a really good mystery. It was a really great idea. I just think it was executed a little bit poorly and I mean as you're going through it it definitely is creepy there's creepy vibes you know especially for Halloween it probably would be a good book for that and I mean a lot of people probably wouldn't be taking as critical a look at it as I was since I went into reading the novel knowing I was going to do a book review on it maybe that had something to do with it but like I said I just had some issues with the construction of the story and how it all played out in the but I'm not going to sit here and say don't read this like I definitely still think you could get something from it and I think a lot of people would really like it but if you have not read the book and you think that you might want to then please go ahead and skip out of this video because now I'm going to be going into a little bit further into the story and talking more about the plot and the characters and I don't want to have any spoilers um, for people that are wanting to read the book so this section is going to have spoilers in it so goodbye to all of you who haven't read it yet so Going back to what I said in the beginning about not really connecting with the characters and kind of my first impressions of them, I really thought in the very beginning, like that very first chapter, I almost thought Nat was a, sec was a security guard. <laughs> so I don't know <laughs> if that was just me interpreting it strangely, but I thought he was a security guard at first. And then in the second chapter, um, when Becca's dad comes to him and I realize, oh, he's a therapist. And I just kind of thought to myself, after seeing that text conversation that he had had with Detective John Bailey, I just kind of thought, this guy, like, really? This guy is a therapist? Like, I would not want this guy to be my therapist. And then that further along, once he, I started realizing way ahead of time before the character did that he was starting to have feelings for Becca. And I just was so grossed out by that. I mean, first of all, this girl is way younger than you. Second of all, you're her therapist. Like, it was just so gross. I just got such a gross feeling from it. And I just, I did not care about Nat whatsoever because of all that. Like, I just couldn't care less whether he lived or died. Like, you know, to, in the ending, when you realize that he went crazy and that was his biggest fear, like, I'm just like, bye. Like, I don't care about you <laughs> at all. And Detective John Bailey, like, he was a little bit more likable, but there were still parts of his character too that I didn't like. Like, I just wanted him to be this really, really great dad. I mean, I felt so bad for poor Charlie, you know, and I just wanted poor Charlie to have like this amazing dad. And for the most part, he was kind of made out to be a good dad. But that one scene, like where I was starting to, after a while, I was kind of starting to like John's character a little bit. But that one scene where he picks up Charlie from school and he's thinking to himself, like as he sees Charlie sitting there by himself, he's thinking, God, can't you even try, like try to make a friend? And just when he had that thought about his son, I just was so grossed out by it. I was just didn't like him anymore <laughs> after that at all, because this poor kid, I mean, he's completely mute. He can't talk. And you know how kids are nowadays, like nobody's going to be friends with that kid. Like in just a regular, normal school setting, a lot of children won't be friends with that kid. So for you to sit there and think to yourself like, oh, he's not even trying, like get real. I was so annoyed by that. <laughs> and from then I was like, this guy's not even a good dad. Like I just don't really, like he's just seems kind of pathetic to me. And then all these other characters that he, they introduced, like 
when you're seeing through the point of view of Chuck, for instance, who, I mean, of course, in the beginning, the story opens up with him stalking his ex-girlfriend. And so you're thinking, like, what is this weirdo doing? Like, you know, and then he ends up having an affair with his ex-girlfriend. So, I mean, of course, this character is completely unlikable. And I'm sure that our author did that on purpose because this character dies very early on in the story. So you don't care at all that he died. But, you know, like his character... And then Jose, like there was a couple of other characters that you see through their point of view and you just like, you're just keeping on getting introduced into more and more characters and you're thinking like, okay, like why couldn't they, why couldn't he have written those characters the way he did Margaret, for example? Like, you know, like Margaret in the beginning was the character that got murdered and set this whole thing off. Why couldn't they have written these characters in that way where you're not seeing through their perspective but you still are getting their story and kind of knowing what happened with them I don't know really the way that he did it it just made it more confusing to me because I just felt like we were getting introduced to all these characters I couldn't really keep them straight at first and I just I mean after a couple chapters they were dead and that character what the heck was his name Jimmy what, what was the point of even having him in there he was the one that found Elizabeth's body at the morgue and he like goes to have sex with this corpse and then he ends up getting killed. Like what was the point of that other than a gross out factor? Because yeah, like that was horrifying. <laughs> the fact that he wanted to have sex with this corpse. That was a really gross scene and it was horrifying. I don't know if he, his character was added in just for that scene, but it just seemed completely pointless to have his character in there at all, let alone have it be a first person perspective where you're thinking you're going to be introduced to this character and he's going to stick with you for a while and he's just not. So I don't know. I just felt like the whole first half of the book was getting to know characters that didn't play into the last half of the book and you didn't connect with and you didn't care about and it just seemed pointless that they were there. I did like the plot. Um, I thought it was a very interesting take on it on how, I, like I said, I don't really know if this is a zombie book or a possession book. Um, but how this goes back years and years and years and years to the war times and I really liked how they had the characters become possessed by this ancient spirit that you know kind of has revenge out on all of them who were there years and years ago committing these atrocities during the war. I really did like that. Um, I liked how it kind of wrapped up in that regard. I did not like the way it wrapped up in the ending. Like when you're in that scene with John and they're heading towards that fire and you know that he's going to find Charlie there, your heart just starts racing because you're thinking, oh my God, is this man going to find his child being burned at the stake? Like what's going to happen? And you, if the chapter closes on that scene and you're expecting the next scene to pick right back up there and, you know, for this dramatic scene to play out and instead you just get told of, kind of a glossy overview of what happened when they're talking about Nat. So Nat ends up going crazy after seeing Becca commit suicide and <laughs> from falling from that window. And during that time, you find out that John Bailey comes to visit Nat there and that he brings his son along and that every somehow everything was okay. Everything worked out and Charlie was fine. You don't know how that happened, what happened up by that fire. You don't, you don't have any of those answers. All you know is that it worked out fine and you don't actually get to see any of the action, anything that led up to that. So that was very frustrating. I felt like that ending was a total cop out and I was not happy with it at all. I, I closed the book and I was like, well, that was a stupid ending. <laughs> so. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said before, like, I mean, I think this could be a good book and, you know, some people might really enjoy it. I just had some issues with the story's construction, basically, and especially with the ending. I think it could have been done really, really well. And it just, it was almost like he just got lazy at the end and was like, nah, I don't want to write this scene. So we'll just gloss it over here. But it did provide answers. You found out what happened to all the characters. You found out why everything happened. And I mean, I guess that's good. At least it wrapped up that stuff. You guys, that is all that I'm going to say on on Nicholas Wolfe's The Binding. Please let me know in the comments down below if you have read this book and what your thoughts on it were. I would really be interested to know if you had the same kind of issues with it as I did or if you really liked it or what you thought about it. Leave your comments down below and I will see you guys here tomorrow for the next episode of Halloween.
Have a great day. Bye.